guys and welcome to our first ever baking episode here on Zubu and Milu. I am so excited. Today we are going to be making sugar cookies, specifically ones that I like to call gammies. My great grandmother growing up, she made really great sugar cookies and they were actually called Gammy's Valentine cookies because of course we used to call her Gammy. Throughout the years, I've tweaked the recipe just a hair and I just really got in the habit of calling them Gammy's instead of Gammy's Valentine cookies. So that's what we're gonna be making today. So there are really two different kinds of sugar cookies that I think of when I hear the term sugar cookie. I think of the ones that have a higher sugar content that tend to spread out and be kind of flat when you bake them. Or there's the kind that has a lower sugar content that tend to be a little bit more cakey and fluffy that pair really well with an icing that you can decorate. And those are the kinds that we're going to be making today. So to start out, we're going to take 350 grams of either an all-purpose flour, or I also have a gluten-free flour mixture that I'll put a link to in the description below for the video for that. To this, we are going to add one teaspoon of baking powder, <clears throat> one teaspoon of salt, and I am kind of a funny person about salt, so if you prefer using <clears throat> um, a different kind of salt rather than a table salt, uh, or if you prefer using unsalted butter, because we do use the salted butter here in, in this recipe, I'll go ahead and put uh, information on that so you can use different kind of salt in your recipe if you prefer. Then <clears throat> uh, we're going to whisk this together. Um, you can sift this if you want, but I find whisking uh, works. Woo! <laughs> the whisking works just fine. You're Mom not should not get it to. If you don't make a little bit of right, mess, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I do. I like making a little bit of a mess. Okay. So we've got that whisked together and ready to go. <clears throat> then we're going to go ahead and start creaming our butter. And as I said, this is a salted butter. It's two sticks or one cup or half a pound. <laughs> Okay, I should also mention that if you're using a stand mixer like this that's a little heav more heavy duty, you can go ahead and use this, uh, the butter cold from your fridge, but if you're using a hand mixer, you want to make sure that the butter is room temperature, which is about 68 to 70 degrees. And then we're going to go ahead and throw in our sugar, which is 140 grams or about two thirds cup. All right, I'm going to go ahead and give that a good scrape down. Also, I should mention that I really don't take this butter and, and sugar to a really fluffy consistency for this recipe. It's not necessary. You still do want to mix it in really well, um, but you don't have to have it quite as light and fluffy as most recipes call for when you're creaming butter and sugar together. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add in our eggs one at a time. And this is two large eggs, just so you guys know. They're also straight from the fridge, so although if you are creaming in a, with a hand mixture, you'll also want those to be at room temperature. Now we are throwing in one teaspoon of vanilla extract. You can probably see that at this point it's not as cohesive as a lot of different cookie recipes ask you to make the butter mixture, and that's gonna be okay. This will still come together really well. All right, we're gonna go ahead and throw in our flour mixture a little bit at a time. Make sure you scrape down your bowl so you can incorporate all of your flour. So if you're using a regular all-purpose flour, you do want to make sure you're not overmixing this, otherwise it can make for really dense cookies. But when you're using a gluten-free flour mixture, it does give you just a little bit more leeway since you're not um, forming gluten when you're mixing this. Okay, and we're done. Now obviously, if you were to use a regular all-purpose flour, this would look more white than it does now. But this is basically the texture and the way you want your dough to look, right? Okay, we're going to go ahead and make sure we get our... Uh, what is this thing, guys? 
our beater. Beater. Thank you. <laughs> we're gonna get our our beater ding, ding, for beater script ads. Woo! For that, you get a lick. Woo! Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, sometimes you guys, we're good. Okay, and then just give it just a little bit of a you know quick mix, scrape the bottom to make sure that everything's mixed together properly, and it looks like we're good. So now we gotta put these cookies on the cookie sheet. All right, so now we are going to grab our cookie sheet. And we're going to grab our scale, right? And um, I put just a little bit of plaster wrap on this because I do like using the scale to measure it out. If you don't, you, you can spoon this onto a cookie sheet, that's just fine. Or use a cookie scoop, although this is a little bit of a thicker dough, so the cookie scoops don't work quite as well with this particular dough, since it has a little bit of a higher flour ratio. And I should probably put this over here Makes a whole lot more sense. Okay, we're gonna put that on the gram setting. I like to do two grams of dough for these cookies. Roll them up, put them on the baking sheet. And then I'm gonna come back after I got all of them on here. So you guys don't have to stare at me while I'm putting them all on here. It'd be really boring. All right, we have our last one that we're putting on our cookie sheet. Now, uh, I need to mention, if you're using this with gluten-free flour, you kind of have a choice at this point. If you bake these off right now today, they will be grainy um, because gluten-free flour tends to take extra time to absorb the moisture from the other ingredients, but these do bake up at the best point if you leave this dough in your fridge for three days. Um, two days is sort of the bare minimum, I think, as far as the greeny texture goes. A good 48 hours in your fridge will really reduce that. And then the last 24 hours kind of helps give it a better texture as well, sort of a more light and fluffy. You're gonna get a little bit more of a domed cookie if you leave it like this. So I actually like to take and just tap the cookie dough on these down just a little bit so the cookies aren't quite as puffy and domed on this. And this is the same with this gluten-free flour or an all-purpose flour. So we're going to go ahead and we have preheated our oven to 350 degrees and we're going to bake these up and then I'll be pulling one of these cookies out a little early so I can show you what you want to look for so you know when this is underbaked and then I'll also show you what it looks like when it has been baked through properly. And the time we're gonna be throwing these into the oven, uh, it could be as low as 10 minutes for a regular all-purpose flour. Uh, if you're using a gluten-free flour, you're probably gonna be looking at closer to at least 13 minutes on these. And then it can go, you know, 15 to 17 minutes up to there, depending on what kind of flour you're using in this. So I wanna kinda of show you, hopefully you can see how this cookie is just slightly underbaked. It's still got a little bit of a shine to it, and the middle of this cookie right here uh, is a little darker, you can see, than the sides of the cookie, right? Also, you are going to want a little bit of browning on the bottom. This is really hot, and this is not brown uh, enough for this cookie. But you can tell when I turn that back over that, that it is still too doughy, right? It's doughy in the middle. So we're going to want to take this cookie to the point where um, it's uniform with the baking, right? There's no discoloration in the middle. And then probably go about a minute past that point just to ensure that it's baked through. We have just pulled our, thank you, our cookies out of the oven. You can see the lovely one I was showing you with. So let's go ahead and show you what these cookies are going to look like. Now because these are gluten free, the bottom is going to be a little bit darker, right, than your regular all-purpose flour. So with all-purpose flour, you're going to want this to be a little bit more on the golden brown side and not, not quite this dark. But for gluten-free, you actually do want to push this a little bit more toward the, towards the dark side. And then you can also see here with the tops how uniform the color is with this cookie. That's exactly how you want it. With a lot of cookie recipes, you have them, you specifically want them underbaked for the way they cook up and the flavor, but for these ones you do want to make sure that they're baked through. 
Now because our sugar cookies actually don't have quite as much sugar in them as some of the other recipes out there, and American buttercream actually works pretty well with this one. So we're going to go ahead and put our butter in the bowl of our stand mixer. And then we're going to give this just a little bit of a mix. Okay, we're going to throw in our flavorings. Get that mixed in a little bit. And you do want to make sure when you're making a buttercream that you keep your mixer on a fairly low speed so that it doesn't incorporate a lot of air into it. So uh, I like to put my powdered sugar in a little bit at a time. One, to help so that it's not going to go poof all over the place. And then two, it just kind of helps to incorporate it really well um, and fewer, fewer little um, powdered sugar chunks if you do it a little more uh, slowly. Make sure you're scraping down your bowl every now and then. So as you can see, I've incorporated about half of my powdered sugar in and my icing is starting to get to the point where it's a little bit on the dry side per se. So we're going to go ahead and add in just a little bit of our milk um, so that we can help thin it out, but I would only add in a teaspoon to start. after every time I use it. All right, this is still a little bit on the dry side, so I'm gonna throw in some additional milk. Um, I'm probably gonna go for the full two teaspoons of it. it. It can be a little difficult to tell when an American buttercream has enough liquid in it. Um, and basically, when you're, when you're mixing in the bowl, you don't want it to clump up in one area. When it's pretty good, it's going to stick to the sides of the bowl and um, just seem a little bit more... give me a word. <laughs> fluid? Yeah, a little bit more fluid. A little bit more fluid. <laughs> fluid might not be the right word. You might think fluid and be like, my buttercream should be runny. Creamy? Creamy. Should be more creamy. It should, it should stick to the sides of the bowl and not clump up. Let's just leave it at that. That sounds good. Oh, the things they're going to think. Fluid. Not a bad word, but we understand not it differently fluid. than somebody else might. It's going to create lovely peaks that stick to the side of your bowl. <laughs> Alright, and our buttercream is done. Salud. Alright, so now that we've got our icing made and our cookies are cooled off, we can go ahead and ice them. Okay, just going to apply some pressure while we swirl that icing on. lovely rosette. And then if you'd like for a little bit of extra garnish, I have some toasted almonds here that you can sprinkle on top. And it kind of gives everybody a little bit of an idea of what kind of cookie these are. Or that it has almond in it, especially if somebody 
might have some nut allergies. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and finish decorating things up and then we'll be right back. All right, and here are our finished cookies and sadly I can't eat these right now at the moment. I know guys, I know, but I love making them. So I'm making the videos anyway. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you, that this video, I hope that this video helped you um, have a little bit more confidence in being able to make some cookies and some really tasty cookies too. So if you did enjoy this video, we hope you can hit that like button. Subscribe if you'd like to subscribe to our channel or we'll put the description uh, in the description, the link to our Instagram uh, account. account. Yes, I was about to say page. Same thing. <laughs> but put the link to our Instagram account if you'd like some behind the scenes on future recipes and we hope to see you guys soon. Bye! Bye.